Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Doki Doki High School Love Time. Doki Doki High School Love Time is a riveting visual novel romance story written by Mujin John Cell that really just involves a bunch of anime stereotypes. The school bell rang, and the various students of Class 2A started pouring into the classroom. I may look like a guy from that story about hammers, and I most likely am. Amongst them was our heroine, Sachika Nishigaki, your average Japanese high school girl. Her grades were average. Her personality was average. Her looks were average. In short, she was not the kind of girl who would ever be noticed by one of the boys. Hey, hey, what do you think you're saying? However, there was someone who had been noticed by Sachika. Indeed. The girl was at that very moment experiencing youthful love. Also known as the curse, the brand, the scourge, that which binds us. That day was a day she was determined to confess her feelings to Senpai. Narrator Gun is right. I can't waste my precious high school life holding these feelings inside. If I just keep staring at him like this, Nothing will ever begin. But... But it's nice to look. He's so... The target's name... Kentaro Matsubara. His grades were average. His personality was average. There was, however, one thing which had caused Sachika to feel the flutter of butterflies. His looks were slightly above average. Sachi? What are you staring at so lovingly this early in the morning? Ah, uh, I... I wasn't... Um, uh, uh... Somehow, despite her determination to confess on that very day, Sachika absolutely whatsoever lacked the courage to spill the beans to her best friend. It's written all over your face. You're blushing like a maiden. Actually, the truth is... Fun fact, the average time it takes to come up with ridiculous and contrived excuses is 3.2 seconds. I've been experimenting with cough syrup for recreational purposes. That's right, Uncle Mujin's cough syrup. From the same people who brought you Uncle Mujin's cream corn and Uncle Mujin's don't spoke pot kids. You're high? Yes, that's exactly it. I mean, um, don't judge me, you baka. Needless to say, Vika, whose grades were slightly above average, did not buy it. The second bill cut her off from further investigation, however. First period, mathematics. Sachika's least favorite subject. From the very get-go, the date dealt a heavy hit against her HP bar. She'll need to raise her vitality, but to do that, she'll need to grind more souls. In the first break, she immediately maneuvered for an alliance. Say, Mikareen, touch the rainbow. Oh, I see you've sobered up. Sure I'll eat your rainbow. Wink. A badge? Um, anyways, have you ever c c c c c con confessed to anyone? Oh. Um, this is... I have this friend, you see. You know, that's not going to pass if I'm the only friend you have, silly. Actually, the truth is... It's for my secret pen pal from Belarus, Vigitor Mikhailovich. Don't ask me how to pronounce that correctly. Belarus? Why not just Russia? Where is Belarus anyway? Did, did Sacha just beat me in terms of geography? Me? It worked. She suspects nothing. S so do you have any advice for, uh... Oh, Sachi. Leave it to me. Mikirin knows everything there is to know about romance. Can't you tell from my stars? After all, there's no way my Atomi games are wrong about these things. 
Really? Mikarine, you're the best. Without question, it has to be on the rooftop. First, you invite him there after school, and then, in the warm light of the sunset, you deliver your heartfelt confession. No other way to go about it. Uho, Yaranaika. Okay, rooftop. Then, I unzip my jumpsuit, right? And then we make out in a bathroom. So, so how do I... How should, um, Pijoto invite him to the rooftop? She didn't even bother to change the target's gender. That's obvious. It has to be a love letter, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought so. Just pour your feelings onto the paper. Can't go wrong, because I'm Johnny Depp. Okay, got it. Thanks, Mikarin. Second period. Physics. Never have you blowed a Sachika's willpower incoming. However, at this hour, Sachika was truly invulnerable to the jabs of education. For instead of paying any attention to class, she was pouring her heart into a letter, right there in the classroom. She took all her dokis and made it into paper form. It's finished. That's quite the unexpected motivation from Nishigaki-san. I'm happy to hear it. But please, keep it down during a test. Just pass your paper, the, 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 the front, when the time period ends. t t t t test Yes, all this time, Sachika had been writing her love letter on the back of the test form. I, I can't turn this in. In one shot, the date dealt a critical hit to both her HP and her grades for double damage. It looks like she will just need to get good. But perhaps the girl who didn't stop to think before writing on the first blank piece of paper placed in front of her would not have done well even if she had tried to do the test. I'm an idiot. Tee hee. Failing school is funny and cute. It's an endearing trait, not a flaw. Third period. The boys and girls were split up into groups over two consecutive hours of P.E. Normally, Sachika would have been unable to make any progress in this time. But Sachika had a plan. I'll fake an injury and be taken to the infirmary. Then I can sneak out to the classroom, finish my love letter, version 2. Point one. And carefully place it in Masabara Kun's bag without anyone around to interfere. It's a perfect plan. There's no way this can go wrong. Alright, girls, today's PA is Dodgeball! Most of the girls let out a collective moan at the mention. After all, Dodgeball was a sport where you could easily get hurt. For that very reason, Tachika was elated. I'll fake an injury! by actually getting hurt. Brilliant. Perhaps fate is on my side after all. Why don't you take an example for Nishigaki-san? That's a spirit girl. Yes, Sensei. Let's do this. Dodgeball, ho! Dodgeball! Yay! The other girls were beyond confused to see Sajika whose physical mode condition was average, so motivated. Everybody seemed to sense that it was barren not to ask. You too can be motivated, if you buy some of Uncle Mujin's cream corn. Yeah! Taste the rainbow! Ten minutes into playing dodgeball, Hachika was in trouble. What's wrong with these people? They throw like girls. None of the girls in that particular class were sporty, so they all held back, afraid someone might get hurt. Fate clearly wasn't going to play into her hand that easily. Sachika had no choice but to catch the ball being thrown at her in play. She couldn't be eliminated yet. She had to be on the field when that fastball came to send her flying to the infirmary. 
I guess I expect it to be too easy, but that doesn't matter. Looks like I'll need to find a way to get the enemy team riled up. But how? I can't go taunting them. What if Matsubara can found out? I'll have to eat their rainbows. He'd think I'm delinquent for sure. I'll have to gamble on the teacher. Please, Sensei, don't fail me now. I'll put more effort into the PE. I swear. Sensei, does the winning team get a prize? Oh, hmm? Hey, why not? Let's throw in a little extra incentive. The winning team! I've got it! The winning team! Can sit down and warm up laps next week. Suddenly, the dodgeball stopped completely. All sound fell flat. The eyes of every last girl in the gym lit up with fire. The opening hook of this song sounds a bit like the Space Jam theme. Red Team, sorry, but you're going down. Today is the day we crush Blue Team with us! Generic screaming noises. I'm so brown to see my students riled up so. This is why I became a teacher in the first place. Well, this and the watch cute high school girls sweating in a PE uniform. Meanwhile, Tachika's team, Red Team, had the ball. She would have to wait her turn. Is that Homura? Homo Homo. Her teammate let out a powerful battle cry and threw the ball across the field. First blood! One of the girls on the other team got hit right in the stomach. With a whimper, she doubled over in pain. It'd be at least 10 seconds before she respawned, and she would not have all the armor and health upgrades, and be at a huge disadvantage when hunting for weapons. By the way, can someone take Yamaguchi to the infirmary? Alright, next is my turn for sure. Hit me with everything you've got. Help in on revenge, Blue Team launched a fierce shot at the Red Team. Completely neglecting the actual game, she threw herself in the general path of the ball. Unfortunately for her, it was a devious curveball. It missed Sachika, and hit another girl straight in the face. The teacher blew on his whistle to signify a fault. No point. Remember, girls, the face shots are invalid. Keep it sporty. Oh, and someone should take her to the infirmary. That's a pretty nasty nosebleed. Tch, how dare you miss me? Because of the blue team's fault, Tachika got the ball. Completely forgetting about the plan, she threw with all her strength, knocking the girl who threw the curveball out cold. Um, girls, maybe you're taking a little too seriously. Five minutes and several victims later. I was only down to one Pokemon. My level 10 versus their level 40. Despite the type differences, this was a match I could not win. How? How did it turn out like this? I couldn't even get a single hit. But that's over now. The blue team captain will have to hit me now. It's not too late. And it looks like she's determined to win this. Chance of Ghetto. It's over, Nishigaki. The ones who will win. Or the blue team! The ball flew across the gymnasium, as though possessed by a demon, straight towards Sachika's face. This is it. My plan can work after all. I can finally go to the infirmary and meet my senpai. And suffer a broken nose. Ugh. What happened? Zachi, you're awake. Uh, Mikarine. You need to be more careful. 
You got hit pretty badly there. You've been out for a few hours now. Uh, a few. Right now, it's the break after fifth period. You missed the second half of PE. And Japanese literature. And you call yourself a true weeaboo. What? No. After that, the PE teacher decided to call it quits a dodgeball. We played badminton instead. Forget about that. My chance. My chance to... to deliver my love's letter in secret. Ooh. You want to play badminton that badly. Ah, oh, don't worry. There'll be more chances. And besides, you look like you were having so much fun with dodgeball. Makerine. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe you should just rest for another hour. Next is English anyways. No, I'm fine. Let's go to class. Mikarine, lend me an envelope. Sixth period, English. Still determined that this had to be the day Hachika was writing on her love letter in class. This time, she made sure to be using a blank piece of paper and not her test like an idiot. Every now and again, she would lift her textbook under which the draft was hidden to write a few words. She didn't have much time, so it would have to be a condensed version of her first attempt. After the next break would be homeroom, and then everyone would be going home. She had to make sure that letter found its way into Kentaro's bag sometime during the next break. It would be the last chance. Yatta! It's finished! And this time, I managed not to say it out loud. This letter, this letter contains my most honest feelings towards Senpai. It contains my heart, my soul, a lock of my hair, a little bit of my blood, and a cakey I made. The bell rang, and Sachika's heart almost came to a complete halt. This was it. She had to put her letter in his bank somehow, in a ten minute time frame. It would be the most exciting ten minutes of her life up to that point. Another blessing! Matsubarakan is chatting with one of his friends, looking away from his bag. I've got to remember the basics of sneaking, and get in there and deliver my feelings to Senpai. Taste the rainbow. Zachi, what's up? Why do rainbows keep appearing every time we look and meet eyes? Chat with me. Huh. Except, let's do it over there. Zachika pointed at an area near Kentaro's desk. She needed an excuse to be there, and Mika Rin was going to be that excuse. Um, sure. As the two positioned themselves in the center of the classroom, Mikarin started to suspect what was going on. She had no intention of interfering with her best friend's plan. However, Anne was actually quite curious to see how it played out. So, uh, Mikarin, have you seen that latest movie? Um, what's it called again? Attempting to be subtle, Sachika leaned back against Kentaro's desk carefully concealing the letter in one hand. It was all or nothing. Kentaro was still discussing something with his friend. Incidentally, the latest movie, and his bag was right there. There was no room for mistakes. Tachika had already confirmed that the bag was open. All she had to do was drop the letter, and then everyone would appear out of nowhere and cheer for her, with her slow little hands. Her hands are so tiny. So tiny. In one second it was all over. The letter cleanly fell into the bag. The mission was a success. Yo! Kento! Startled, Sachika looked to her side. It was Junichi, another one of Kentaro's friends. Oh, Junichi, where you been, man? Just some business to take care of. I'll tell you later. 
Gingerly, Junichi reached the side of the desk and grabbed the bag that was hanging there. Hey, thanks for looking after my bag for me, man. No problem. Ladies, excuse me. Tap the fedora. No, no way. No, no. I have to stop him. Oh, Nishigaki-san. Didn't see you there. Oh dear. Uh, uh, Matsubara-kun. Hi. <laughs> have you seen that latest movie? Generic comic book action flick number 55. While Sachiko was taken by surprise, Junichi made a perfect getaway. Tokyo Dash, Race Torn Detective 2. I have it, actually. But it seems really cool, doesn't it? I really want to go see it sometime. Oh, Azachi wants to see it too. Why don't you two... Red face. Sachika placed a hand over Mikarin's mouth. S -s -s see you later, Matsubara-kun. He's so beautiful. He shines like the stars. And come on. That was a golden chance, you know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. After school, Sachika felt like dying. Sachi, let's go home together. Uh, what's wrong? Johnny Depp, the love letter plan was a failure. Already? You mean that love letter plan meant for your pen pal in Russia? Um, he called me just earlier. She totally forgot it was Belarus, too. Because she's not Johnny Depp. Azajika, don't give... I mean, tell your friend Petro not to give up. All that matters is getting your feelings across. So, shoulders high, chest forward, and keep trying. Easier said than done. I believe in you. Fight on! I'll be going ahead now. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I can only take this as a sign of God. It's over. It's not meant to be. My love Doki Doki quest is over. All those anime cliches I followed, all those hopes and dreams, fate wasn't in the stars. Nishigaki-san. Matsubara-kun. Where are you going? You and I have cleaning duty. We... I have cleaning duty with Matsubara-kun. Yeah. It's been right there on the board all day, you know. Don't tell me you were thinking of skipping on your duty. Of course not. I'll be happy to help, Matsubara-kun. The two sweep the classroom without a word to each other, as a light jazz tune played. It evoked a feeling of the 80s, like some kind of romance scene, without all the steamy sex. All right, that should be good enough. Thanks, Nishigaki-san. Ah, uh, no, I I was on duty after all. W well then, see you tomorrow. Wait, not yet. Don't go, Matsubara-kun. Wait, Nishigaki-san, what is it? If there was ever a perfect moment to confess, this was it. Kentaro looked at Sachika expectantly, and she felt as though her heart was going to burst. This is it. I have to do it now. Matsubara-san, I... I... I want you to call me by my first name. No problem. See you tomorrow in the... Sachika-chan. In the end, she couldn't confess her feelings. And yet, for the first time since falling in love, Sachika felt a glimmer of hope. Meanwhile, on the rooftop of the school stood a boy who thought the springtime of his life had finally come. Is she going to show up soon? In reality, 
This event would mark for him the start of a very, very long winter. To be completed in the sequel, Doki Koki Quest 2, Forever Alone. You see, the problem is, everyone was so anime, nothing got resolved. If you catch the anime curse, it's like, how do I describe this? It's like being a werewolf. On the night of confessing your feelings to Senpai, everything will go wrong, and everything will just kind of go back to square one. You'll transform into this hideous beast with big googly, beautiful eyes, ponytails or something, and every line of dialogue you'll have will just be... I can't confess my feelings yet. So remember, if you see anyone with the symptoms of anime syndrome, run the hell away. The more you know.